Hello, I'm uh, Gary Hayes, otherwise known as Gerardo Alcala for Flamenco. And um, I'm going to explain a little bit today about the instrument that we use for Flamenco, the Flamenco guitar. Flamenco guitar is similar to a classical guitar. It's, it's nylon strings, but the woods are different from a Flamenco to a classical. Flamenco guitar, the sides and the back are normally cypress wood and on a classical guitar they're a dark brown color wood rosewood from either India or South America and the top for the flamenco guitar is generally spruce or cedar from Canada the best wood for the top is European spruce German they used to call it German spruce which is hard to get now they're using a lot of American spruce now and uh, the other differences are the, the bridge on a flamenco guitar is much lower. So the strings are closer to the top and the strings are closer to the fingerboard than on a classical because the classical wants a very clean sound and flamenco we tolerate a little bit of uh, a little bit of raspiness, a little bit of maybe buzz, a tiny bit. It's kind of okay for us. The flamenco guitar will have a, a much raspier sound in general. The sound will come out faster and die faster, and it'll be a little bit more trebly than the uh, rosewood classical guitar. Oh, I should mention also about the tuners. These are uh, mechanical tuners, but the, the flamenco guitar traditionally in the old days had friction pegs, wooden friction pegs, like a violin. Uh, which would be made of either rosewood or sometimes uh, they would be made of ebony. And the classical guitar will always have these mechanical. I think most people nowadays prefer mechanical, even flamenco guitars, but uh, I actually prefer the pegs because uh, I think it gives a little bit better sound, all other things being equal. But uh, it's not a crucial thing for me with a guitar. If I like the guitar sound and it's comfortable for me, then, then whether it has wooden pegs or, friction or uh, mechanical doesn't matter to me too much. One of the other things they say about the wooden pegs is that it makes it a little bit, the head of the guitar a little bit lighter. So that if you're holding the guitar in the traditional way, which is like this, this was the old fashioned way. Like when I started out in flamenco in the early 70s, if you didn't hold the guitar this way, you wouldn't be taken seriously almost. You know, you'd say he's not a real flamenco guitar player. So this was the traditional way, kind of like your muscle here, your arm muscle is just kind of the weight of your arm is holding the guitar up so that you're not, you're not holding it up with this hand. But when you're learning to do this, you're going to have at least a couple weeks of slipping and sliding and you're not going to be very comfortable, but eventually you'll get it. I still prefer this way myself, although very few people now, uh, actually for the last 40 years or so, not too many people have been doing it this way, sitting this way. Uh, because Paco de Lucia, who revolutionized everything in flamenco guitar, or a lot of things, he came along and he started sitting this way and uh, because he was, he was the king, everybody started following the way he did it, you know. So most people nowadays, you'll see him sitting like this. You can also sit with a classical guitar footstool, like classical guitarists use. Classical guitarists use it under the left foot, so you're kind of like this. Flamenco guitarists, usually if they're going to use one, they'll use it under the right foot which gives you pretty much the same position as the Paco de Lucia position, but without having to cross your leg. Some people have trouble crossing their leg like this. So I think that's a very good, this with the footstool is quite, quite a good way too. But for me, I still prefer the old, old uh, traditional position like this. One reason is because your back is straight. When you hold a guitar like this, I think you're, it's easier to keep your back very straight and you're less likely to develop uh, 
back problems over the years. Another difference between the classical and the flamenco is in flamenco, because we're accompanying singers, and we generally learn a form in one guitar chord key, for different singers' voices, we have to adjust. Maybe we only, we only, we like to play something in A all the time on the guitar. And we're used to that, but, but the singer might, might sing in, in D or something. So we have to adjust. And how do we do that? We use a capo. A capo they don't use in classical. So there's, basically there's three kinds of uh, capos that are used nowadays. There's the traditional, which is this one. This is one. It's a friction, it's got a little friction peg on it and a, a third string. And then a little piece of leather here to, so you don't get a, eventually wear a line into the back of your, into the back of your neck. So this one would be put on like this over the top behind, and then the friction peg goes into the hole, and you tighten it. So you change the key, depending on the singer's range. Now this kind of capo, I think it's kind of starting back, we call the capo sejilla in flamenco. And this kind is kind of coming back again. Actually, Paco, who changed everything else, he actually always kept using these for some reason. I actually prefer these myself because no matter where you put it on the neck, you can get it the right tightness that you want just by tightening it this less or more. So, I, and I, plus aesthetically, I like them. They're just more beautiful and you can I mean, I have a collection of them from different guitar makers, and some of them have beautiful inlays. They're made out of different materials. Uh, they can be made out of wood. Mostly they're made out of wood. Uh, I've also got one that's made out of bone. I've seen them made out of, you know, different materials like that. So this is the traditional one, which I like. And then after that, this kind came out. This is a Dunlop. This kind came out. And a lot of people use these. This goes over the top and then just kind of snaps in like that. And these are quite good. And then there's a newer kind still that a lot of people are using now, which is this kind. And this goes over the top like that. And then behind it just kind of it's very easy, and when you, when you do this, there's, there's no pull, there's no lateral pull anywhere on the string. So actually, with the traditional capo, and even with the Dunlop capo, that other one, a lot of times when you put the capo on, even the guitar is in tune, your guitar is nicely in tune, you put it on here, and it'll be a little bit out. You have to kind of pull and fool around a little bit to get it into sounding nice. Whereas with this one, it tends to be okay. If the guitar is in tune, wherever you put it, it's going to be pretty much still in tune. So that's the advantage to this, plus that you can move it very quickly. Like if you're on stage in a show, you don't want to take a whole lot of time tuning and, and changing the capo and stuff. So, so these are nice in that sense, I like them for that, but but I still prefer this one, the traditional, even though sometimes on stage you'll, uh, you'll take a little more time to change and from one number to another number. If you have to change the capo, it'll take a little more time, but I, I just prefer these. Another thing that can happen with these is sometimes the string, this string can break. So whenever I'm on a, on stage with one of these, I always have a spare in my pocket in case this in case this breaks. So it's a good idea to have a spare. The flamenco, the, the really good flamenco guitars are all handmade and they take quite a while to build one, uh, especially if they're French polished at the end, the varnish. 
some some guitar builders uh, just use a they call it pistola, which is just kind of spray varnish. It's very quick to do and it's quite durable. Uh, but the best sound really comes if you if you varnish the guitar uh, with French polish, which takes quite a long time. But and it's also less durable, so it scratches easier. A guitar that's French polish will scratch a little bit easier than the other kind. So uh, the varnish does it does affect the sound. Though I prefer I prefer French polish. This is a Arcangel Fernandez guitar, which is one of the greatest builders of the last you know sixty years or so. Uh, student of Marcelo Barbero. Guitars nowadays can be quite pricey. <laughs> they can, for a good handmade guitar, you're gonna you'll be spending anything from, I would say, a minimum of four thousand U.S. up to thirty thousand, something like that. Or if you get a really old uh, collectible like a Santos Hernandez from the 1920s or 1930s, you could pay, I don't know, maybe 100,000 for some, something like that. The newer the guitar, the more, the louder it will tend to be. Over many years, many years, they might, you lose a little bit of volume, but they'll gain in the character of the sound. So this guitar happens to be from 1994. And it's all got, a, got quite a mellow sound now. <laughs> So that's a little bit about the guitar.